Wishing I had worn my shorts now at the Bakewell show because the sun is blazing down upon me, which is glorious. And I'm still trying to put together this list of animals for this farm I've got in my head. And I've come across some alpacas. And uh, Chris is the man who has the joy of having these in his life. Tell us, tell us a bit about alpacas. They look like a cross between sheep and camels, don't they? Well, they're not sheep family. They're definitely camelid family. Um, starting with um, the camels and llamas and then coming down to the alpacas. Um, within the alpaca group there are two specifics, which are wakaya, which is what we have here, um, very warm and cuddly, and the suris, which have the long dark ringlets. Oh, long dark ringlets, that sounds interesting. So, um, how did you come across alpacas then? Why did you decide to have them in your life? Um, it started for me about ten years ago, um, saw a program on Countryfile, I think, um, and then about five years ago, um, an opportunity to escape corporate life um, came up. So, at 49, I took it, got involved in alpacas with five or six animals, um, and then um, went on a steep learning curve and ended up with 70 within about 12 months. Uh, and now that's what I do for a living. I'm here in midlife and crisis here. <laughs> so, what were you doing in the corporate world then? Um, well, basically, I was uh, running small businesses. Uh, MD or general manager kind of roles um, and I just felt that I needed a change um, and midlife and crisis may well have been part of it but I, I took that leap of faith um, and I haven't looked back since. And thank goodness for that because otherwise we wouldn't be here today would we? So tell me about these four little darlings here. Are these fully grown? They're ever so tiny aren't they? Yeah what we've got here is four pet boys um, and they're about two years old and they've probably got about another year's growth which is about three or four inches in height and probably the same in, in breadth. Um, as you can see, they're fairly slim at the moment, but as they mature um, up into that full age, then uh, they will fatten up nicely. We are just talking about shearing uh, sheep earlier. Do you shear these alpaca then? Yes, we do shear, um, and I shear myself um, throughout the Midlands and, and north. <laughs> um, not in the same way that sheep do, because uh, the alpacas are bigger and stronger, and we have to restrain them, uh, front and back legs on the ground, um, shear one side of the saddle and then flip them over and shear the other side. Uh, it takes a little bit longer than sheep shearers. Do they like you then? Um, ours do because of their trains, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. So do people come to you then to buy alpacas? Are they in fashion at the moment? Yes, I mean, our, our job is uh, breeding alpacas to, to sell. Um, who do you sell them to? Well, it varies. We get people who want to buy pets who have got a paddock of an acre um, and they don't want sheep or goats um, and they like the alpacas, so there's one end. Then we'll have small holders who want a small breeding group uh, and then we can move on to uh, spinning groups who uh, are interested in the fibre, they'll shear them and then, then spin themselves and, and get added value through the product. That alpaca wool is so soft, isn't it? I wanted to come out of bed and put my feet in them every morning. Oh, I would love to get one of those. So uh, let's just talk a little bit more then about, uh, uh, you said you've got four, they've got harnesses on. Does that be, is that because you can take them out for a walk like a dog? Yes, it, it, we can take them out for a walk. It's not quite the same as a dog. And, and uh, with us at Charmwood Forest Alpacas, we do uh, walks with alpacas. Um, and we get people from, mainly from the cities, in all honesty, coming in to us. Um, and we do a two hour experience. Um, and the halters are there literally to, to restrain them. Uh, an alpaca, if it feels restrained, then it won't try to escape. Good for them. And so, I think you said that the petting boys, does that mean that you can have them as like a little puppy almost, like a, 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 a pet in your house? Yeah, I mean, it's either, when we say pet boys, it's, it's pet as opposed to stud. I see. Um, and pet means it's literally that. It's, it's not petting because they are not domesticated, uh, although they can be tamed and trained. So um, people do have them in their front gardens and people do have them in their front uh, rooms. Um, but we wouldn't recommend it. We would certainly recommend a, a paddock for their well-being. And have they got attitude? No, they haven't. They don't have a bad bone in their body. They're completely passive animals. They're very, very sweet. Well, I'm glad you had your midlife crisis. Thank you very much. And you know, if you're thinking about another career, I think you should go into radio. You've got such a sexy voice, Chris. Well, thank you. It's all right. You're listening to Paula. This is BBC Radio Sheffield. We're at the Bakewell Show.